What I enjoy most about working in the beef industry is I love being handling the cattle and working with the cattle. Uh, it's very satisfying for me and my employees to take a 600 pound animal, bring him into the feed yard, and then see him grow into a 1,250 pound steer that has been efficient, has performed well, and we've produced a good product at an optimum level of finish that can go then to the packing house and produce a high quality steak. After spending several months at the feedlot, an average calf has gained 500 pounds and now weighs around 1,300 pounds. Now it's ready for harvest. The processing plant is vital to beef production. Advancements in technology have increased efficiency, animal handling, quality control, and most important, food safety. In a modern beef processing plant, uh, it, they'll harvest about 5,500 cattle a day and the animals enter the plant and they're humanely stunned. Uh, before an animal can even uh, get to the point where we're, where we're talking about today, it has to pass inspection. The inspector uh, certifies the animal, he checks various tissues and uh, the cleanliness of the operation and certifies that the animal is safe to eat. And when that's done, he places his stamp on there that stamp identifies that it's past inspection. I think one of the great things that's happened in the, in the beef industry over the last hundred years or so is, is our ability to make use of, of all the non-carcass components of the animal. The fat's gonna be separated out uh, from the rest of the material and there's lots of uses for the fat from these animals. If you buy any product like a cosmetic, shaving cream, soap, and somewhere in the ingredient statement it says palmitic or steric acid, or even a lake acid, they came from an animal. Once harvested, the carcass is assigned to U.S. Department of Agriculture, or USDA grade, by a trained USDA grader. This grade gives the consumer additional information on the various properties of the meat. Graders are um, under the Ag Marketing Service, and their sole function is to divide these carcasses into groups based on different characteristics. And the groups that we divide these carcasses into for, for USDA quality grades are prime, choice, select, standard, and utility. So we get about, from this, from this carcass, we get about 70% of this guy is going to be uh, retail cuts. It is then divided into primal cuts and subprimal cuts. At this point, the beef is sealed in plastic, placed in boxes, and sold to restaurant suppliers and grocery stores as boxed beef. The beef industry as a whole cares about producing a quality product, a product that's safe and wholesome to eat, all the way from the producer who raises the calf to the feed yard that get the animals ready to be harvested to the people that are working in the plants. The, the most important thing that they want to do is produce a food product that's safe to eat. Shopping for steak can be a bit overwhelming, especially with so many varieties available. The definition of a perfect steak can be argued without resolution, which makes for a tasty debate. So how do you choose the perfect cut? From the hind quarter, there's two major cuts here, the round and the loin. And it includes the sirloin and the short loin. We're going to get top loin steaks right here, T-bone steaks from this area right here, porterhouse steaks from this area, and then up in here is going to be the sirloin steaks. This piece right here, this is called the rib section, that's going to be the most valuable part of the forequarter. And this section right here is where we're going to get uh, ribeye steaks, rib steaks, and uh, prime rib roast. We're cutting ribeye steaks here today. Now, here we go. Okay, look at all the marbling. Now this is top choice. That means it's in a category of the top 30% of all the choice cattle that go through the plant. There are several different schools of thought on how to cook a steak. Everyone universally agrees that you need intense high heat. The theory is that it 
quickly caramelizes the outside of the meat so all of the juices stay within the steak. It's wholesome. It's fairly easy to prepare. It's nutritious. What's not to like about steak? This is America. We eat steak. Many fine restaurants advertise aged steaks. So what exactly is an aged steak? We do what we call wet aging. Uh, the beef is broken down into primals, uh, various big cuts of beef, wrapped in cryovac and held. Uh, we get it 21 days old, and then we hold various cuts for various lengths of time. The key to aging beef is to allow the temperature to stay the same so that the enzymes that are naturally occurring in the, the beef itself uh, can activate and work, uh, breaking down the collagen and connective tissues, thus tenderizing the beef itself. Americans tend, I think, to uh, enjoy steak more than chicken or fish uh, because our culture says that that is the, the top of the food chain, uh, that uh, it's more expensive than the others, and uh, you treat yourself to steak. It, it's that comfort food knowing that having a steak, you can afford it, it's okay. Over the years, there's been a lot of misconception about the nutritional value of beef, but if you're a steak or burger lover, there's a lot of health benefits going into what you eat. So beef is a good source of iron, which is important for prevention of anemia, which is actually the most common nutrient deficiency from birth to death. So it's a great source of iron, good source of uh, protein, so good for building muscles, phosphorus and selenium. It's a good source of zinc. Uh, it's a good source of uh, vitamin B12, which is only found in meat products and again prevents a certain type of anemia called pernicious anemia. The basis of using beef in your diet is very important. People often associate beef with being a pretty high fat uh, meal that they might prepare, but actually there's about 29 lean cuts of beef that you can choose out of your grocery section. Um, things like flank steak, any of the tenderloins, any of the highly muscled uh, types of meat. You can also buy ground beef that has a higher uh, percentage of lean meat to fat, so like the 95% lean uh, ground beef would be a good choice. Beef is also an excellent source of monounsaturated fats. So you may have heard about monounsaturated fats when we're talking about olive oils. So a three and a half ounce portion of beef compared to that same amount of chicken breast, the amount of monounsaturated fats in beef is actually higher than that found in chicken breast. So it's a good source of what we consider a healthy type of fat. And the number of servings that you would need for protein really depends on your gender and your activity level and your age. So a young man might need a lot more protein in their diet than an elderly woman. But typically about three ounces of beef provides about half of your uh, protein needs for the day. Is all this talk about steak making you hungry? Well, I'm right there with you. Let's get to cooking. Tasty, yeah. Really Tender, nice. really nice. Mm -hmm. Cooks did a good job. Juicy. <laughs> <laughs> it's outstanding. I'm glad I'm not a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> I love steak because of its, uh, its uh, delicious, juicy uh, flavor and, and the way that, especially off the grill, it, it holds that, uh, that smoky flavor. Steak itself has that wonderful, self-satisfying balance of fat and proteins that just make the mouth feel wonderful. And I like it when I bite into a steak and it's uh, fairly tender and juicy and, and it's hot and you can just feel that thing, that flavor kind of explode in your mouth and gives you a tremendous amount of satisfaction when you eat a steak like that. Well beef is great. It's a, a real important part of my diet and I, I don't have it every day but I certainly have it at least two or three times a week and it's a very important part and I certainly enjoy it. 
Beef is an essential part of the American diet, and we really owe it to the hardworking people of the cattle industry. Beef doesn't come from the grocery store. It starts right here on the ranch, and we're very conscious of, of you know, the need to produce a quality product. We have that in the back of our mind all the time. Anytime we're working these cattle, we want to make sure that when it leaves our ranch, that it goes to somebody and they're satisfied with that product. There are no better people in the world than, than, than ranchers. And uh, they care about the environment, they care about their cattle, and they care about other people. And uh, it's a shame that, that most of America can't meet ranchers, because if they could, they would understand what great people they are. To me, when I eat a steak, it's more, it's more than just the flavor, which I think is sensational. The steak symbolizes what's best about America. Honesty and integrity, to me, are all part of this, the beef eating experience. From the open range to the feedlot, to the processing plant and grocery store, it's a complex process. There's a lot that goes into every bite of delicious steak, and the results speak for themselves. Field Trip was made possible by the Cooperative Extension Service at New Mexico State University and by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. It's so mmm, mmm, good. <laughs> If you would like to purchase a copy of this program, please visit krwg.org.